Okay, and I will read this short introduction. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, this meeting will be conducted remotely. Parties interested in addressing the board during the public hearings are asked to email confidential secretary Lorna J. Carroll at L. Carroll, that's L C A R R O L L, at wbridgewater.com for instructions on joining the remote meeting. Additional public comments regarding non public hearing agenda items will be recognized at the discretion of the chairman. Live video and audio of the meeting will be aired on Comcast Local Channel 9. Additionally, a recording of the meeting will be posted on the West Bridgewater Community Access Video On Demand website at https colon slash slash wb hyphen cam dot org slash vod slash. I think I read all that correctly. Okay. So first in our presence, we have Eldon Marrera and Madeline Marrera. We asked Eldon to join us tonight so that we can recognize his many years of service and also show a few things we have done in your honor, Eldon. First of all, we want you to know that we renamed the Board of Selectmen Room in your honor. Is now known as the Eldon F. Marrera Board of Selectmen Meeting Room. Very, very nice. Which you spent a lot of time in here over the years. That is recognition of you. Also, we have a great picture of you up here. Oh. Yeah. And we have this to read to you, Eric. Eldon. Um, Proclamation, and there have been several things I've been had the privilege of doing since being elected as selectman, um, attending the Veterans Parade, just to name a few. But I, I think this is um, one of those that gives me the greatest honor. So this is, is a proclamation of the Board of Selectmen, West Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Whereas Eldon Francis Moreira's name first appeared as a recorded birth in the West Bridgewater Annual Town Report of 1931. And whereas Eldon F. Moreira has been a long life, I'm sorry, a lifelong resident of West Bridgewater. And whereas Eldon F. Moreira served on the Finance Committee for eight years from 1973 to 1981, and whereas Eldon F. Marrera was first elected to the West Bridgewater Board of Selectmen on April 8, 1981, a post he held for 39 consecutive years, earning a total of 9,307 votes in his favor, appointing himself the People's Selectman. And whereas Eldon F. Marrera is the longest serving selectman in the town's history, and whereas Eldon F. Marrera has since worked with countless boards, committees, and commissions to give West Bridgewater and its residents a voice on the local, county, and state levels. And whereas the town of West Bridgewater, its employees, and the Board of Selectmen do heartily express our sincere appreciation to Eldon F. Marrera for his unwavering devotion in a career in public service, his many contributions towards the betterment of the town, and for his continued willingness to help. Therefore, be it resolved, we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of West Bridgewater, do hereby declare the second floor town hall meeting room, the Eldon F. Marrera Board of Selectmen meeting room in honor of West Bridgewater's longest serving selectman, Alvin Francis Marrera. We extend to him our deepest appreciation for all of his dedicated work and wish him well in all of his future endeavors. In witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hands and caused the great seal of the town of West Bridgewater to be affixed this third day of February, 2021, the Board of Selectmen. Denise Reyes, Anthony Kinahan, and Meredith Anderson. Thank you very, very much. It's a great honor to accept this. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, you know, 
my wife and, and family, I, I really appreciate what they've done because I, was a, I wasn't home too much on holidays and there was always something going on. And, uh, and so uh, with their uh, uh, support, uh, I continued to go. I, I only missed one meeting, I think. I was on the way to the hospital for something. Thing there. And all, all the years that I've been there, so I've been pretty dedicated. And of course, uh, in, in my office here, uh, Lana and Linda, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And of course, uh, the architect all behind this stuff is uh, right over here, is David Gagne. And I really appreciate because anything that we had to move uh, uh, between the office staff, staff and the board of selectmen, we managed to move. I think we point, pointed this. Uh, uh, I know we have uh, a town in the right direction uh, because we, we came a long way when I started. Basically, there was nothing really developing, and uh, it, it took the you know the office staff and a, and a whole bunch of us to uh, get together and, uh, and and did what we did, and we came out with uh, the election stabilization fund day with what, three or four million dollars there. Yeah, we have over three million dollars now. Yeah, and uh, and with uh, our rainy day fund, and I I had heard that that that's one of the first things I talked to David uh, when he came aboard there. That just, I would like to establish that, that thing there. But there are many, many things that, uh, that we will accomplish there. When I, when I look back and I see with the highway, was working out of a three car garage, and that's the first thing that we tackled. You know, two, two fire stations and two police stations, and, and then the episode of the roofs. I mean, you know, all the roofs were leaking in the school, and now we got a new high school and all that stuff. And all that was uh, because of, of great support from the from the taxpayers who had to put the bill out there. But uh, we, we stayed in a, in a leadership uh, and continued to, uh, to move the town. And, uh, and I, I think that I pointed in the right direction and to where it is today. And uh, with some of the new ones, like you came on, Anthony, Denise, and uh, it's been a big, big help to, uh, to continue what we uh, what we started. And, uh, and of course, uh, the town is not we had the old colony plan council, and uh, there are many of the things, the roads and, and everything else. There's still a lot of work to be done out here, but uh, I, I think you have the right group out here to do it. And uh, I say thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to mention, also joining us, we have Trisha. David and Bobby, your sons, yeah, right. and grandchildren, Caitlin and Justin, yeah. are joining us too. Yeah. Yeah. Alden, I'd really like to thank you. I mean, I came here five years ago now when I was 26, really not knowing where to go, what direction to go in, and without your mentorship and help, I really wouldn't have been able to accomplish what we've been able to together. I thank you for that. Well, I know, you know, a lot of things we disagree or disagree, but I think the thing is we continue to move move ahead and uh, and, and get quicker. And that, I think that's the uh, way. So uh, we, we have, uh, you know, we promised a lot in, uh, in the time that you've been on the board. And, and plus, when Denise comes, as he was a big boost. I mean, uh, I'll go too because uh, we, we continue the pace. And, uh, uh, you know, if, if it's three lights, uh, any of that stuff, even, even, even I get involved with the natural good there and uh, lighting up the intersections and uh, making it better visibility for people uh, to drive on the streets. Uh, but uh, I made a lot of good contact. I didn't do it all myself. It was, uh, like, I know one thing, what I had in my favor was all the way through there, is these ex I, I, They never really, they get off the board and all of that, but they were constantly, you know, uh, talking to me and, you know, I, I got their views and, and, and I moved along because uh, they had been there and, uh, and what I thought, and, and they thought was the best of the town. And, uh, and uh, you know, if we didn't, uh, go in the direction that they felt, and I, I certainly hear from them. You know, they they, they had an open communication. They would call me anytime. You know, to uh, 
to develop that kind of, uh, uh, you know, I wish that maybe, maybe at home that I did a little bit more because there's an awful lot of time that we spent outside there of, uh, of doing the, uh, the justice of the town, but uh, it, it certainly uh, has put this town uh, and I'm very, very proud of, of being their leader and for so many years. Uh, was the Sydney Nine on the board and, uh, and another eight for the uh, that, uh, that would give me uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, 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 on the on the board. It's a, it's a long time, uh, and, uh, you know, because uh, there's a lot out here. But a lot of the things like the reps and the sound of the O'Connor County Council had some morale up there and. Uh, very close to him. I, I served in all, the, in all the boards up there, and uh, he also, uh, the uh, uh, boy down in uh, Plymouth, uh, the county advisory board, which uh, uh, Denise is now a member, and uh, and this uh, Metropolitan's there where, where my board on that committee there, uh, all the way down to Plymouth. Uh, any any highway project there, uh, you know, would have have my name, and I have to sign up. Uh, so it's very very interesting. Uh, so I, I not only was on this board, but I got on the other board to try to move the to town. I figured that's the best way to do it to get where the action is, and, and then I might go and move whatever we have to move. And uh, hey, it's uh, it's. it's Quite, quite a thing, and uh, uh, you know, and but I, I welcome all these new ideas and the new people that come on there. And I, even Denise, there you know, was a lot of things she brought, but when we, when we talked it over and all that, and uh, then we went to vote, and uh, and the vote, vote was pretty, pretty positive. Uh, we didn't just vote just to vote, uh, we had a basis, and uh, and that's where we run with. Uh, but again, okay. that, uh, oh, I'm sorry. it would be possible uh, with all the, all the operations of the, you know, and I was just thinking, and a lot of the people that, that, that have touched me out there, some of them, you know, have been there a long time. And one of the ones that comes to mind when I was thinking today, too, and I can mention all the ex selectmen and all that stuff, that you know, but one thing that it stands over my head right now is uh, the bill thing. And uh, Bill was on, been on the zoning board of appeal, and, and, and really, really, someday I hope that he is he is, he is honored for something for all of, all of the hours and work that he puts into this uh, uh, community. Uh, he, he's done a you know outstanding job uh, uh, of that, and he's been right on it. And as I was thinking, I reminisce through uh, like Bill Turner was a big supporter of mine there when he was last We were discussing. The status of this town, uh, you know, it's people like him and uh, the ex, I mean, even Mike McDonald was one of the oldest selectmen that served with me. And I never thought I would beat out first. I think he served 16 years, you know what I mean? And, and, and all of a sudden, I go by the 16 mark. And, and then I face where it is today. Boy, oh boy, it, uh, that's been a long time. But uh, like I was saying, uh, uh, I, I couldn't do this without help because I, I needed all the help I could. And I got a lot of good help uh, inside to, to move things. And, and like I just told you, I, I, I mentioned them before. Dave came in the picture here and he, I call him the architect. He moves them. <laughs> and, uh, and I, and, and you know, anytime I get up and, and even when we took him in, in, in Thrive there and uh, the salary was basically you know, way below what surround the town is. And uh, I found out one thing, uh, sometimes if we hire at the low pace, an awful hard to get it up, but afterwards, I mean, they don't realize what uh, we need to the community. And, uh, and uh, because I see it every day. Uh, he, he's there and if you want to verify that, just come buy some night there and see what, but if you want a long car in the yard there, yeah, there'll be days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They've driven by him anytime soon. Just yeah. this car in the parking lot. Eldon, I think uh, your family, I know Mary wants to say something, and maybe some of your family okay, members would like to tell you something. 
Mary? I'd like to make sure that I say thank you as well. Elgin, you became a selectman in 1981. That's the same year my family moved into West Bridgewater. So you have always been a selectman um, as long as I've lived there. And my dream is for my own children to stay in town. So I can only hope that I can do as well as you have. So thank you for inspiring so many, myself included. Thank you very much. And how about the Marrera family? Trisha, you look like you're ready to say something. I think you're on mute though. I don't know. I was looking at my brothers to see if they wanted to jump in. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say that dad um, absolutely positively loved representing the town on many different boards and uh, starting with the finance committee and other committees. And then obviously as a, uh, as a long serving um, selectman and he gave a lot of hours, but I have to say that was his passion. He absolutely loves the town of West Bridgewater and um, he just really enjoyed interacting with all of, uh, all of the people in town, both um, through the town hall and all the various departments in town. Um, I think he definitely earned the, the title of the people selectman because he really, he, you know, he was born here and raised here and he just absolutely loves this town. So, uh, so you know, dad, you did a great job. And uh, we're really proud of you that um, you've enjoyed being there and serving the people. And um, we're glad that you had this honor. And I can't wait to at some point come by uh, when it's time to come in and actually see, see, that, uh, see the new door and see the picture that's hanging at some point. Uh, so good, good for you. We're proud of you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tristan. I'm certainly proud of you. I mean, for all you've done too. You know, I mean, it's, you're, you're there for the family 100%. And uh, I, uh, uh, I guess everybody wish they have a daughter like you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, David. Is David? You have? Yeah, I'd say congratulations, Dad. I, I have vivid memories of um of at, right after dinner you got the iron out you got your your suit jacket and, and your tie going so that was a uh, a staple in in my childhood and i i know you uh you kept it going uh for a long long time so uh congratulations i'm uh, thrilled for you thank you david anyone else would like to say something You'd have to un just unmute your microphone. Caitlin can't stop smiling. Your granddaughter. <laughs> That's, she's so happy for you. That's awesome. David, did you want to say something? Well, I did, but I just want to make sure everybody had an opportunity to speak first. Okay. Hi, can I say thank you to Eldon? Kenny? Kenny May. Hey, sure. how are you? Eldon, I want to thank you for all your continuous support throughout the years for our department. It's been a pleasure working with you. And I Still look forward to seeing you Dunkin' Donuts around town. Again, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the support you've given our department. And good luck with the rest of your family. He was wonderful to us, to the, just to let you guys know. He treated the fire department with respect and always there for us, no matter what, good and bad. Uh, we appreciate you for all years of service. And I, I've been a resident since 1984. And uh, I can't thank you enough for what you've done for this community. Thank you, Eldon. Yeah, thank you. You know, and, and I... It's a pleasure there of going because I'm one selectman just don't sit behind the desk. I come up and see what you're doing, what you need, and uh, and anything that uh, we talk about uh, uh, when we can't open the fire department, and it is what it is today. And uh, I know that you're in, 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 in the retirement, and, and I wish you the, the best of luck too because you've done you've done a great job. But what do you got? About 30, 35, 36 years in? 33. I uh, was close. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate every answer you done because you uh you made that fine department what it is today. Thank you very well, much. Oh, I did it with all your help. Thank you, Alvin. Thank you. David? Yeah, so I want to say thank you. Um I was appointed eight years ago. You were on the board. <clears throat> I still remember you're the one who made the motion. Um I was sitting in the audience and there was three of us, and back then you could actually have people in the room. And so <laughs> there was like forty people and uh, I wasn't sure, obviously, how the vote was going to go, and then you made the motion, and I'll never forget that. I'll also never forget my first day that I came to work. It was first thing in the morning, it's 8 o'clock, and at 8.01, the girls in the office said, Eldon's on the phone for you. Now, you were the chair at the time. Right. So he picks up the phone, and if anybody knows Eldon, he always speaks in mid-sentence. So you pick up the phone, and he's already talking. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what he's saying, so he's talking. 
And he says, I'm on my way. I've got to see you. I think I did something wrong. So he comes here. He says, we're going to jump in your car. We jump in my, and the first thing he wanted to do was he wanted to show off the town that he loves. We literally drove around for hours. And he showed me all the spots in town. I said, this is great. I'm going to get paid to drive around. Um, <laughs> but he legitimately showed all the places in town as to where he grew up, show me his house. Then he said, this is my homestead, which is the old house. Um, drove around. And then he said, we're going to go get some lunch. And we went to the Italian kitchen. And it took me six months before I realized that's in Brockton. <laughs> like, I thought that was a bridge walk. So... Um, but we had lunch there. And then the other thing that I learned from Elgin is legitimately where to eat everywhere in town and brought me to clam bakes whenever he could. So um, in all honesty, you are a fantastic board member. It always amazes me because um, I would call him about something and Elgin, I would call you and you always knew what I was talking about. You know, we could, you guys know how much stuff we go over and years later, I could call him and say, hey, do you remember? And he would remember. And so I was always really impressed with everything you said and what you did and your assistance and your help. And being in politics, you know, you always run eventually into someone who may not be the biggest fan. And it was great as an employee to know that you always had my back and the back of all the employees here. Like seriously, that was, that was the best part. So, you know, we, we, we thank you very much. I thank you a lot. And um, thank you for everything that you did. Um, and if I may, I literally just received a text message. You were talking about ex selectmen. I just received a text message from Jerry. I don't know if it's clean. I haven't read it yet. Oh, boy. So it. Yeah. Um, but if it's Who's okay, got the beat machine? <laughs> um, you know you know Jerry, so we don't know what he thought. Um, so here's what he says. Eldon, it was a great pleasure to serve by your side for 12 years as selectmen. You are an inspiration to the people of this town. Your years of service and dedication as the people's selectmen will forever be unmatched. The naming of that meeting room in this historic building is an honor you truly earn. The countless hours and the countless meetings over the years all help shape our community and truly make it the gem of the Metro South. Due to COVID restrictions, I cannot be there to celebrate with you. However, I congratulate you on this honor I hope to someday be again to serve this great town as selectman in the Elden meeting, Elden, Elden Marrera meeting room. That was good. And the last thing I'll just say is, I remember meeting your wife for the first time when we named the street after you. So I, I want to thank Jerry for yes, was his emotion. It so was. Yeah, so I I didn't know we have this honor to name this room after me, but I have a street named after me. You know what I mean? I do. And, and what's the idea about a lot of this name and, and the recognition is there is after, after a person uh, passes away, then he's recognized there. But uh, they do it different. It was we didn't want to wait. No, you, we want you to see all of this. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's very, very nice. Uh, you know, and it's really done a lot good. And, and Madeline, I know, and into your family too, I'm, I'm sure there were many sacrifices you had to make because of your commitment to the town of West well, Bridgewater. It, it was like, you know, like I had a beach place there, but it seems that it was, I was up here more but because mm -hmm. every single holiday we had to be there. It was, it was either the thing at the park or, or, or November 11th and all, all those things. I mean, we have to be there. Well, you know, you've got a place now, a, a country there, and you, yeah. you, you say, well, uh, uh, so th this is what happened. But I didn't expect to come in here today and, and see David with a new hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so it's a new West Bridgewater. It is. It's, it's gone, right? But it, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if there's enough words to express our gratitude to, to you for all of your years of service and everything you've done for this town, to your family for um, you know giving up some of those special events so he could do everything he did. He's an amazing man. Um, from the day I met you, uh, you you were a good friend that day, and you're a good friend now. And I'm I'm grateful to have known you and to have worked with you on the board. Well, we, we always knew that that West Bridgewater was it it was one of the most important things to him. West Bridgewater, the people of West Bridgewater, you know, he just couldn't do enough for them. So 
And I buy him for that very much. I really do. And the kids do too, you know? And I, I think one of the things is, is the girls that you work with and the people in the office that did, did all the work when, when you were here, you know, uh, thank them for that. Well, I definitely, because they're the ones that, that, that carry this thing up to where it is. If, if it wasn't our office staff, and it's, a, it's been a good one over the years, and uh, it gets better with the thing. I think it's just the best right now. Really, yeah. really uh, you know, it's, it's well, very, 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 very talented, and the people that come and approach you uh, will get back to me, and, uh, you know, it, no matter how small or uh, little or whatever, if it's a problem, they get right into it, and they, they do. Uh, and we're very, very fortunate to have uh, Robin staff. Yeah, it was great working with you. I feel like an honorary grandchild. I look forward to all of our morning phone calls, catching up on things, and you know, I know there's good things well, to come for you. Well, so. I still get the agenda. I, I, I'm still interested. I, you know, I want to know what you're doing, and uh, if I can help in, in any any manner, I, I, no, I will call I, you. I, 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 you know, I, I will help. Uh, one of the things that I've, I've developed, I mean. I, I meet people every day. They think I'm so well. And uh, if, if I have a connection or I can do something, uh, I'll do it. Maybe it just takes a, a, a phone call or something like that to, uh, to help somebody out there and, and makes it. Uh, and I, I've got a lot, I got a lot of respect in the state and everything else and all of that thing. Like I said before, it, it really gets nitty gritty sometimes. If I had to call Washington, I would do it. No doubt you would. Eldon, I want to present this proclamation to you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for putting this for together. And, uh, and I know uh, I know you've been wanting to do it, and uh, and you wanted to do it in Fresno, and then, then things really got rocky with the viruses and everything else, and it's, it's been to try to keep things going. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's unbelievable, you know? And if you want to stay and listen to us go through our business, Thank you, Anthony. We'll be seeing you. We'll yeah. talk in the air and whatever. Um, should we jump to 6.30 to the open meeting or? Yep. I was going to ask is, is that um, Kelly Laramie is with us. Kelly. Um, our, we have a 6.30 public hearing. Can, do you mind if we do that first? It should only take a minute. Jump to Johnson Management, if that's okay with you. Sure, that's fine. Um, I just, I'm cutting out, some of the audio is cutting out, so I'll, I'll just try to keep reconnecting. Okay, thank you. 
I'm having trouble hearing. I'm I'm having problems hearing things too. David, can you hear me? I can't hear you guys. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, did you miss, couldn't hear me for the whole thing? All right, I'll start again. Okay, Town of West Bridgewater, public hearing of Board of Selectmen, pursuant to Chapter 138 and Chapter 140 of the Massachusetts General Laws. A public hearing will be conducted remotely on Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021 at 6 30 p.m in the selectmen's meeting room town hall 65 north main street west bridgewater massachusetts on the application for a new beer and wine on-premise liquor license for ghop llc dba gg's house of pizza 499 west center street west bridgewater mass interested parties are asked to email confidential secretary lorna j carroll at l c a r r o l l at w bridgewater dot com for instructions on joining the remote meeting to address the board during the public hearing. Board of Selectmen Denise Ray is chairman. We need an um, a motion to open the meeting. Yes, please. Okay. Is so there moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Roll call vote. Anderson yes. Anderson yes. Ray's yes. Okay, David, do you want to start us off on this? Sure. So um, so you may recall that a, about a month ago or so is that Gigi, who is with us here, uh, she has taken the old Bloom's Pizza and converted it now into her, Gigi's House of Pizza. At that time, we awarded her or with a common BIC license so she could open. And since then, she had determined that she would also like to have a beer and wine license. We do have one available. Um, we have done our background checks. Everything checks out. There is no objections or concerns. And so it's before the board. If you have any questions for her? And I would ask you for a vote in the affirmative to award a fair and, real, fair and wine license to her. Okay. I don't have any questions. I don't have any questions. I'd be glad to make a motion to approve the license as presented. Is there a second? There is a second. Okay. All those in favor? Can I hand yes? Anderson, yes. Raise yes. You're doing well, Gigi. You're very popular on Facebook, I see. <laughs> very popular. Oh, she's muted. Uh, oh, there you am go. Am I muted? Now you Hi, thank you so much, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I just want to say I am, like, overwhelmed at the response that I've gotten from the town of West Bridgewater, the surrounding people that live around here. Everyone that has come in has been so unbelievably nice so understanding it's been I didn't expect to open and be like so busy and everyone is just like coming out showing support I'm enjoying like meeting all these new people people that I already know so I mean it's just been so awesome I'm super happy um and so I just want to be able to offer like a a beer with your pizza I, I kind of I think that that kind of goes together um and so I'm excited to take the next step uh, forward and just keep it going, you know? So I just want to say thank you so much to everyone, people who have come in and tried it. If you haven't, come see me because um, I just want to give you guys the best food and a good experience. So, Well, we're okay. happy you came to West Bridgewater. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Is there a motion to close the public public hearing? Now? So moved. Uh, second. All those in favor? Can I yes? Anderson, yes. Raise yes. Thank you. Okay, at this point we'll move back to our 620 application to change DBA name for Johnson Golf Management Incorporated. There was a clerical error on the agenda. It's LLC. It should be Inc. Um, DBA Riverbend Golf Course located at 250 East Center Street. David? Yeah, so um, as we know, the 
town owns the golf course, but we turned everyday management over to Johnson Golf Management. They have legitimately done an absolutely excellent job. Every promise that they have made, they have fulfilled. The course looks so much better. Even people in town who at one time were concerned about the town purchasing it and have been there, I've received positive feedback from them. Um, they looked at, they've always had a liquor license. Uh, the liquor license prior to them was Riverbank, um, Riverbank Golf Course. And so they had retained that name on the license. At this point, all they're looking to do is just change the name from Riverbank to what their actual name is, which is Johnson Golf Management Inc. Again, there is no objections or issues. They've certainly been a very good license holder. And so as a result, I would look for an affirmative vote from the board to make that change of ownership name. Any questions? No. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. All, right. All those in favor? Anderson, yes. Anderson, yes. Raise yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ke uh, that was Kelly, right? Yes, that yes. was here with us? Yeah. Thank Kelly. Thank you very much. Thank you for everything you do. Of course, thank you, David, for the kind words, and um, we're happy to be there as always. Happy to see the place improve. Yeah, Business no. is good. Yes, yeah. Um, luckily, you know, in a pandemic, golf is something people can do, mm -hmm. and we're happy to provide that and and have more people come. We're happy with that. Yeah, so things are good. Good. Thank you. Appreciate. Thank you very it. much. You're have welcome. a good evening. Okay, at this point, we're going to move forward, and it's just about 645, so we can start our budget hearings, David. Yes, we can. So first of all, the docket, I believe I see his name is in here, Scott Golder. Scott is okay, I'm here. collector. He has four budgets for you, which is his budget, along with the debt that, um, that he, his department manages as well. And I really would like to take this opportunity and say Scott does a really nice job. Um, our bond rating has continued to increase under his tutelage. And he, as you know, last time he came before you with a repurposed bond that we got less than a 1% interest rate. So he's done a very, very good job of paying attention to the markets and making sure that wherever we can save money that we do. And so without further ado, Scott, you're up. Good job, Scott. Thank you, David. Thank you. Uh, so first budget under me tonight is the treasurer collector budget, which is up on the screen right now. Um, I can just go over the very few changes that do exist out there. Uh, the first one is 5112, the fiscal clerk. That's Tori's position. This is just reflecting when she went up a step last year. Um, this is a whole year of her new step instead of doing the half year that we had last year. The delinquent tax collector, 5119, is Jean's position. Uh, this is going to be her 18th year, which is moving her up to the highest step, step eight. So that's that 3% raise. And the only other thing I'm asking for is a $100 increase on 5241, which is the postal meter. Uh, there's a new contract that I just signed, and it's about 9 or $10 a month more. So $100 per month for the year should cover that. Um, Scott, is um, on the increases for the salaries, are those just step increases or is there also something in reference to um, a request for reclassification? I haven't put in the request for reclassification yet. That is included in this number. Um, I think the the increase is so small because I think I had put it in last year and I didn't do it yet. All right. So because the selectmen have to take that vote. Um, so my, but my, the spirit of my question is this budget reflects not just a step increase, but also a request for a classification as well. Is that correct? On Tory's position, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. What, what line is that? 5112. So that's both a step and a um, request. So at, at this point in the budget season, we're really not getting into a lot of detailed discussion unless anyone wants to, unless there's something 
that really stands out. I think the objective is to go through these and pass them on to the finance committee. Yeah, correct. You know, we've asked for a level funded budget mm -hmm. and my, my, I, I voc vocalized this to the board and to the finance committee is that if a department really comes in with a level funded budget, that budget was already approved at town meeting last year. So the town has already said, we're going to fund this department at this request. Mm -hmm. So if they really fulfill the requirements and the wishes of the board, meaning your board, that they're going to come in at just level funded and the only changes is a contractual requirement, mm -hmm. then yeah, you're more than welcome to ask questions, but there really isn't a lot of questions to ask because we've already litigated and vetted these budgets over okay. last year. Okay, so the, the only that stands out as a reclassification of a job because that wasn't part of level funding. That is correct. Um, but at this point, we're passing the, you know, it's a vote to pass them on to the finance committee. There's still plenty of time for further discussion. Um, so if there's a, um, a motion to take a vote. Uh, to could we wait until and just do them all at once? Do them all at once, yeah. good idea. Okay, so Scott, what's your next budget? Uh, next budget is 7,100, the retirement of debt. This is almost exactly level funded last year. We didn't pay off um, any loans in full yet. So the only increase is a small $38 increase. It's just a variance in the year to year uh, debt payment. And then after that is the interest on the long-term debt, 7510. There's a decrease in this, the decrease in 5902 is a combination of a lower interest payment from year to year combined with the refunding that we just went through. So that's $40,000 lower. And then the other three lines have smaller decreases and that's just a reflection of the, the lowering interest rate as we go on. And the final debt category is interest on short-term debt, 7520. Uh, that's just a flat 50,000 and that covers the interest on the bands and that fluctuates year to year. Right now it's low, but the, the 50,000 generally always covers it. Okay. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to pass budgets 1450, 7100, 7510, 7520 to the finance committee. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion, questions, comments? No? Okay. Um, all those in favor? Any hand yes? Yeah, just said yes. Raise yes. Okay, Scott, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. It's a little early. Um, Kenny budget was at seven. I don't know if he planned to have anyone else with him. Can we proceed with going? You can't. Okay. It's not a public hearing, so you know all the time to assume to the estimates. Okay. So, I'm ready to go. Ripping and raring to go. My last time in front of me. Kenny, the floor is all yours. All right. Well, mine's uh, real, real simple. Um, as request, I did the best at level funding as possible, but we did have contractional, some contractional changes. Um, if you go down on the top, you see 51.15 permanent salaries. I had six guys moving up in step increases. Um, which accounted for about $23,200. Um, the next change would be on those step increases. Uh, we had three guys move up an extra week's vacation and one with an extra day. So it was three weeks and one day extra vacation by covering those ships is $8,000. Uh, $5,190 was allowances and stipends that I, I moved actually into salaries. Uh, I took that out of that line. So basically kind of took it out because it got built, uh, a stipend got built into a salary for contractual reasons. The rest of the line, I kept level funded as uh, best we can and work with what we have because I know difficult times for all. That's about, uh, that's all the changes I got for 1.27% increase overall. Thanks, Kenny. I'll make a motion to pass the fire budget to the finance committee. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Can I hand yes? Anderson, yes. Ray, yes. Kenny, appreciate all of your efforts and please thank the staff. Um, we appreciate everything they do and in maintaining this as a level funded budget. Okay. David, 
Uh, and, David wants. And I just want to say one thing. This here is the fire chief's last budget. Um, <laughs> hiring in April. Um, he has already told me that although it would be nice to go down south and play golf every day, he prefers snow and stay up. <laughs> <laughs> Not after my last weekend, I'll tell you that. But, um, but, but in all honesty, Chief, thank you very much for everything. And, and Denise is entirely correct. This has been a tough year on you and your department. And uh, thank you for everything that you, your, your staff does. Uh, it's been a privilege for dedicating my 33 years here. It's been a wonderful ride. And we'll talk. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank have you. Good, Ken. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Okay. Um, 7.15 budget hearing. We have conservation committee and open space committee. I think John Delano. Are you doing both of these, John? Oh, you're muted. There yes, you. I am. Okay. Do you mind if we start with you then? It's a little early, but. I'm here. Okay, great. Floor is yours. All right, uh, for conservation, uh, we have level funded uh, our budget, same as last year. Um, we don't anticipate any problems being able to provide the necessary services. That's uh, 17, did you, okay, so they're both level funded, both 1710 and 1715. Yes, the open space is the same as last year. Okay. Any questions? Is there a motion? No questions. No questions. Is there a motion? Oh, uh, make a motion that we hand this over to the finance committee. Second. All those in favor? Can I hand yes? Anderson, yes. Raise yes. John, we appreciate everything we, you do. We know there's constantly changing regulation in your area and you're right you and your team are right on top of it thank you i'd like to also thank the the selectmen and the administration for um making a good work environment and i enjoy doing it so thank you we're glad to have you here thank john. you john thank you very much thank you. all right bye 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 Okay, budget, um, 730 budgets, wastewater treatment facilities and board of health. Yep, that so is- That'll on. be um, Chairman John Cruz. I just texted him and let him know that we were ahead of schedule. So okay. he's gonna log on. So we don't see him yet. Once, correct? No, I also sent in an email, but I haven't heard that. Right. Okay, who has 745? I get to do it. Oh, well done, David. How would you like the floor to be yours? Well, thank you. <laughs> um, so, I will handle the 745 budgets. I do this every year because they have the smaller budgets. Um, Agricultural Commission is level funded at 600 year over year. Warren's Place Crisis Center is level funded year over year at 2750. Rockton Area Arc is level funded at $250. Old Colony Hospice Care is level funded at 2000. And Plymouth County Extension Services is level funded at $200. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we pass these to the Finance Committee for further review. Is there a second? Second. Oh, any questions, concerns? No? Okay. All those in favor? Can hand yes. Anderson, yes. Raise yes. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, how about if we move on to accept the meeting min minutes of January 6th for review? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Can I hand yes? Anderson, yes. Raise yes. I think we are still waiting for John, correct? Okay. Do you think we can squeeze in, discuss, and vote on extending the transfer sticker deadline to March 1st? I think so. Okay. So moved. <laughs> we know how Anthony feels about that. Mary, there is a motion on the floor. Um, I, I did have a question. My question was uh, um, where we were in sales compared to last year. Yep. So, um, so as of today, we have sold 1,555 stickers. We normally sell about 1,900 to 2,000. So we have sold about 75% of them. And again, the thought process on this is that we normally give a grace period until February 1st, but again, the board is attempted on where they can to be as flexible to residents 
with everything going on, we thought it might be wise to give everybody one additional month as a grace period. So right now we're at 75% sold nerd. Okay, so there's still 25% of ticket holders that, that need this. So yeah, I'm uh, Anderson, yes? Is that what you're asking me? Uh, uh, so we have a motion, so we were looking for a second. Okay. All right. Um, all those in favor? Jenny, yes. Anderson, yes. Raise, yes. Okay. And I think we can move John back Cruz. now. I see John Cruz with a 4th of July background. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's festive. <laughs> good morning. Good evening, everyone. I'm glad it's not good morning. I know. It's been a long day. Well, I'm, uh, is it official now? Am I on? Is my time? You are you are live streaming right now, John. Everything you say is live for the whole town. Well, that's the second time I've live streamed today. I had my plumbing board meeting here in the in the barn today as well, zooming. So it's been two for two today. Well, I want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to um, maybe be the first one in front of your board tonight for my uh, my line items for my budgets for the board of health and wastewater treatment facilities. Um, I'm John Cruz. I'm the chairman of the Board of Health, and I'm here tonight just to basically tell you what the request is, is that everything is the same um, funding from last year, so there, obviously there are no increases. Um, that's pretty much where we're at. Do you have any questions for John or concerns? Um... Um, I, the only thing I want to say is I just want to say thank you to John and his department. Again, this has been a tough year, and we only have one health agent with one secretary, and I'll go over the numbers later on. You know, we've had over 700 COVID cases in town. All of those 700 cases had to be close contact tracing, and between John and his staff and our part-time nurse, that was a lot of work. On top of the fact they still have more health work to actually do. Mm -hmm. You know, that other work doesn't go away. So they've done a really, really good job. Rob Casper's been excellent. Again, I've got our good news later on in the, in the program in reference to where we are with COVID and what, what the direction we're going in. But they've done excellent. I just want to say thank you to John. Again, you mentioned it earlier. Wherever he goes, the party goes. That's why the party <laughs> works are there. Um, but in all seriousness, the Board of Health has really done a fantastic job for this town, and I just want to say thank you to John, and please to the same to your staff. I work with them every day. I meet with Rob all the time, and he has really had a lot on his plate, and he's done a fantastic job. So, John, I think we as a board would echo everything David said. Um, no. I know what your staff is under every day with everything changing. I mean, it changes day by day. It changes hour by hour with as far as the requirements are, what the legislature is, it's a lot to keep up with. And also the phone calls from the community, uh, that the residents that are concerned and hopeful for whether it's a test or a vaccine. And we know you're all working um, very diligently and, and very hard. And, and then to come in very easily with a level funded budget because you, you know your heart is in this town. So thank you, please extend our well. gratitude to the staff and thank you as well. I, I will do that and thank you guys. We, we appreciate the support. It's, it's good that we can all work together and work for the benefits of everybody in, in the town of West Bridgewater. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks, John. Okay, this is, I mean, everyone's coming in, right? I don't, I'm not sure this has ever happened before. Where it hasn't. <laughs> And it just, you really, you have to admire all these departments and boards and, and the staff all caring about the community that, you know, there's no arguments about we want this, we want that. We, they recognize that the town is sacrificed. It's pretty amazing. I agree. So. Um, do we capture a vote on to move on to a final? Oh. Uh, so moved. Second. 
All those in favor? Yes. Anderson, yes. Raise, yes. Sorry to leave you hanging about that vote, John. I forgot about that part. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, guys. Have a good, good night. night. Thanks, you too. Okay, we'll move on to communications and reports from boards, commissions, and town officials. Do we have any communications to? No? Okay. Correspondence from the public to determine a course of action. Uh, no, I would like to bring something up because it just came up today and it's regarding the yellow water in town. Wayne asked me, and I, I will post it later on just to make sure the residents know he's done some, I don't know if you want to call it realigning or tweaking or whatever the case may be, but his hope is that over the next two days, the system will flush out and the majority of town will see an improvement in their water. So the majority, I'm, I'm hesitant to say all. Um, I'll post some more information later, but anyways, he wanted to um, try to get the word out to everyone that's what's happening as of right now. And again, it just came up today. Yeah, I heard from him right before the meeting. <clears throat> Public comment period. Um, we did invite the public to then contact Lorna during this meeting. No one's reached out. Okay, no one's reached out. Town administrator's report. So thank you. So um, I really should count the weeks. I haven't, but it's probably like our 40th COVID-19 update. Um, I will tell you all the numbers are trending in the right direction. Um, this week, again, we capture them week to week from Tuesday to Tuesday. And as of yesterday, we currently have 26 active cases in town. That was down from 33 the week before. That was down from the mid 40s from a couple of weeks before that. And earlier in January, right after the holidays, we had peaked out in the mid to high 50s per week. So we are literally half of what we were at that point. Um, fortunately, again, still no deaths, but obviously people have been sick, but you know, we're doing the contact tracing. And we now know that as we move further away from the holidays, it looks like the case count will continue to go down. So that's all good news and that's all positive. A couple of other things that are pretty positive is that the state now has started to receive its shipment over the past week of vaccines. Um, I'm on a weekly call with the Department of Public Health and Lieutenant Governor. They went over what their rollout is last week. And we know that the governor also had his state of the state address last Tuesday evening. So they are hoping, based on their current allotment, is to be able to administer about 130,000 doses of vaccine per week. That's good. We have 6.6 .6 million people. Um, and the first phase at this point of phase two is going to be those that are 75 and over. And after we move to the people that are 75 and over, it will be 65 and over, and then people with two comorbidities and so forth and so on. The state has done a really good job. They've set up the sites throughout the entire state, and they can actually have the capacity to do 305,000 doses per week. So if they can get the doses from the pharmaceutical companies coming through the federal government, we, they can actually administer 300,000. So again, it's been a little bit frustrating. Um, Rob Casper, our health agent, and I, he sat on the, uh, sat on the computer earlier today, and we tested it. And a half an hour later, we still could not register for a site. We literally tried as if we were mm -hmm. a 75 year old couple. Um, and we just, we couldn't get through it. And you know, we're pretty tech savvy, we know what we're doing. Yeah. So for the people out there that are over 75 or over 65, we obviously, there's not much we can do because we don't control the site, but we are paying attention and we're following and we understand your frustration because if, we can't figure out the system to get through it in a half an hour get to make an appointment then obviously there's a lot of seniors out there who are going to share that same frustration i can tell you some seniors in this town have already been vaccinated in july so that is a positive some of that is trying to get through the pipeline on a local level we received also news um, that our fire department has done all the right things i want to give out a shout out kenny may is chief but especially Deputy Chief Lincoln Tebow. He's done an excellent job on this. He did all the right things. 
and he has gone to town of West Bridgewater, West Bridgewater registered as a site that can receive vaccines and also be able to administer them to the public as well. We have already applied for our first allotment. Now it may be as little as 100, it may be as high as 1,000 per week. We have no idea, we won't know. There's a revolving door on this, but we are targeting the week of the 15th to be able to start running a vaccination clinic in town. We do not know how many. We have a process in place. The Council on Aging has been instrumentally involved. Again, Marilyn Mather and her staff, they have fielded lots of phone calls, doing everything they can to help people on the website, and then also helping us to be able to set up that facility as to where our vaccination clinic will be. So to anybody that's listening to this, please, 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 still try to use the state website. They are going to have more capacity and more immediate capacity than we will at the town level. And if you need assistance navigating the website, please contact the Council on Aging because the Council on Aging has people there that are prepared and ready to try to help you. In the meantime, we're gonna take the next step as well. We're not gonna just rely on the state. We're gonna go ahead, go forward, and um, we've already applied for doses. We are told that it takes about a week or so to receive answers, and then we receive them in the following couple of days to a week. So we will start a registration process to do that. We're fortunate in this town. The Board of Selectmen have shown great leadership on making sure that every year when we can afford to do it, is that you guys expand the senior tax workout program. You just did that at your last meeting. We went from the potential of 36 participants to 41. And those people that take advantage of the program because they work in town and get a tax reduction. In this past year, they couldn't do a lot of work because a lot of places were closed. But we got them covered this year. We're going to put them to work at the Council on Aging, and they're going to answer the phone calls and help people and reach back out to all seniors in order to be able to make those appointments. So we've got a pretty good process and system in place. We're also going to be able to identify first dose versus second dose. And again, that will all be administered from Rob Casper as our Board of Health agent. So please, as we push this information out, we will put it on our website. We will do it on our Facebook page. We will place it on the hub. And we will also do a robocall through the Council on Aging, which right now we have about 1,800 people on that line. In addition to that, we'll also push it out for the newsletter. But some people still are not going to get that information. We understand that. So if anybody is listening and you have a relative or a friend, do you know someone? As we start to push that information out, please contact whoever those people might be. We also know that we have an elderly housing complex in town in Esther Drive. And if enough of those people, because we will solicit their input, if enough of those people um, agree on the vaccine, because again, it's still voluntary, we have also set up a system where we will actually do a mobile site and we will drive to Esther Drive and we will do it there. They are a high concentration of seniors and therefore we believe we can do that. In addition to that, as we solicit people in town, we also have our shuttle bus through the Council on Aging. And if there are people that are unable to drive, we are going to have the ability to be able to go out and pick them up. Again, we're going to ask everybody for patience because that van normally can hold 11 to 12 people. But because of close proximities, I can only put two or three on it. So we're going to, that shuttle bus may you know, end up doing a lot of routes. So again, we're going to ask people for some patience. But I want people to understand a couple of items. One, the town is doing everything we can to do to help. If you want, please use the state site. If we can help you, we will. If you, when, once we get the actual numbers for vaccine, we're going to push that information out. Please, we'll contact you or contact the Council on Aging. We'll get you set up. There are 1,515 people in town that live in West Bridgewater that are 65 and over. And those are people that we'll be focusing on first. After we move through that phase, we will then move to the second phase of phase two. <clears throat> Does anyone have any questions about that? No, and I think the only thing I wanted to say is that there was a lot of anxiety in town, in town about, you know, what was town hall doing? What was the Board of Health doing? Other towns might be moving faster on this than we were, but it, it's hard to 
say anything until you have all the moving parts worked out and get confirmation what we can do and then make plans to not only do it, but do it right. Um, it certainly could have tried to rush it faster, but that doesn't mean it would have been done the right way and properly. So we appreciate everything you and the Board of Health and the staff at Town Hall have been working on this and have accomplished. Yeah, Sorry, thank and you. I can tell you this, we, um, we the, the, the system was turned on at eight o'clock on Monday morning for us to order. And the deputy told me that 801, he was already pushing send. So nice. we were on it as fast as we possibly could do it. Um, so that's all good news on um, on that on COVID-19 and the vaccination process. Next is the governor's local aid budget. So far, these numbers look really promising. The governor has proposed a budget, excuse me, and out of that budget, he expects that for the town of West Bridgewater, if we would receive an increase of about four hundred thousand dollars in local aid, mm -hmm. if that comes to fruition, that's fantastic because our revenues at the local level are certainly low. Um, I will tell you, I am concerned about this initial budget. The governor's job is to present a balanced budget to the legislature who then has to, they go through their process. In his budget, he relies on taking out about $1.6 billion out of the rainy day stabilization fund. They took out a little over a billion the previous year, last year to, to shore up a hole, and they only had about three and a half to four billion at that time. So the legislature is going to have to agree that they're going to almost drain that down to almost nothing. And if COVID-19 unfortunately doesn't, you know, we're hoping for the vaccines to work, but we know that there are mutations and variants. If some of this doesn't work as effectively as we all hope, next year may be a tough year as well. So the legislator may not necessarily want to use all of that money from the rainy day stabilization fund. The governor is also proposing um, um, gambling to become legal as well, basically sports betting. It's already legal in Rhode Island, and it's legal in New Hampshire. And he's counting on hundreds of millions of dollars from that passage of that legislation to help balance the budget. Well, first, it hasn't passed. And second, if we look at marijuana facilities, for example, that legislation passed years ago, and we still have places that are attempting to get permitted. So even if we get legislation this year, that doesn't necessarily mean we may see the revenue come in because there's still going to be regulations for that that have to be put into place. So I'm not so sure that these numbers will stay, but at least at this point, if they're going to be lowered from whatever is presented, I'd rather them get lowered from a higher number. So again, it's positive news. Um, as I always let you know, um, I sign off on whatever vendors used to need to use parking uh, town hall facilities and the Girl Scouts will be doing so in February here at the Town Hall. And another good piece of good news is that about six weeks ago, I came to you and I had delivered at that time bad news that we had applied for a grant to build a sidewalk on River Street from War Memorial Park all the way down to the center town. It was denied. And about four weeks ago, I came to you and I said, we're going to reapply. And we've got approved. So the state is awarding us $254,000. Um, and so we will get cracking on that. Uh, the only one caveat is it must be done this year. That's not a bad thing because we want it done. Uh, but obviously, Chris Anitelli has done a really nice job with writing grants with our pseudo on staff engineer, Jim Noyes, that they've done a really good job and we have received this grant. So I think that that's all really good news. And before I get to the new video on demand, as I mentioned, DPW, I want to say thank you to Chris and to Sean Anderson, you know, we've had a couple of storms now, and these have been strange storms. Um, it is one thing, they would rather get hit with a 15 inch snowstorm that falls in five hours. And these have been longer duration storms. They're working a lot of hours. The previous week we got four inches, but they locked 20 hours because it just never ended. And again, I've always said this, is that I'm extremely impressed. Sean runs that crew out in the field. Chris stays in the office to do the administrative work for when people call. And Sean does a really, really good job of pushing all the guys in the field to really have the best roads in the area. I sincerely mean that. You leave West Bridgewater, you drive to a neighboring town, 
I don't need a marker. I know as soon as I hit a patch of snow in another town when I leave the town. So they did a really nice job and I just want to give a shout out to them for all the work they do. Um, and the last thing is, is that there's um, the cable company has been on and Ben, did you want to speak on this or would you like me to speak? Okay, so, um, so Ben sent us an email. There's going to be a change as to what we do with these presentations going forward for um, residential access. So Ben, you're up. There you go. Well, thank you, Ben. Appreciate you, everything you do. Okay. So, unless does anyone have anything else, Meredith or Anthony? No? Okay. No. Then um, I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session, not to return to open session for purposes of conducting a session in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, specifically all non-union non contractual employees under the direction of the Board of Selectmen. And this would be a roll call vote. Can you hear me? Anderson, yes. Raised, yes. Yeah. So at this point, we are adjourning from open session and going into executive session. Thank you.